All right, welcome back. In this video, we are learning how to find the maximum or minimum value of an array in C++. So what you're looking at here, I've already gone and uh, defined and initialized some array. The array is called values, that's the name. It's of type double, it has five values in it, and I've initialized these five values to be the five values. So what we wanna do is we're going to use a for loop to, uh, to basically figure out what the biggest value is. First, let's try and calculate what the maximum value is. So I'll write our for loop here. Um, and what we want to do at the end of the day, we're going to run this as many times as we need to, so probably five times-ish. And uh, at the end of the day, we only want to print out the maximum value of the whole array once. So that means we're going to be seeing out something that's green outside of the loop. Because if we see it out inside the loop, we uh, we probably print five things to the screen and we don't really want to do that. So we're going to see out something. Now we're seeing out the maximum value so we should define that maximum value somewhere um, as, a, as a variable. Now if we define a variable inside a for loop its scope is sort of limited to inside that for loop so we need to define a variable outside of the for loop. So let's do that here. So this will become the variable that we'll be storing our maximum value in. So we'll, use, we'll make it a double We'll call it max, and for now, let's just store the very first element in there, just as a placeholder. So we're going to store values zero. No, that's an O. Values zero, just like that. Okay, so, and then at the end of the day, we're going to run our loop, which we haven't written yet, but we will in a second, and then we're just going to see out our max value just once to the user, probably end the line, and call it a day. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with our first element we're going to say this is the biggest element we've seen so far then we're going to look at our second element and we're going to check to see if this is bigger than the previous one if so this is our new biggest element uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to look at the next one we're going to say is this one bigger than the current biggest one if so that will become our biggest one and so on we'll continue through that way so what we're going to do, uh, by, by saying that actually element zero with index number of zero uh, is our current max, we've actually done our first iteration outside of the loop. So when we come here to initialize uh, our counter, we're actually going to start int i uh, at one. We would normally start this at zero, but like I said, we've already checked to see is the first number the biggest number we've found so far? Yes, because it's the only number we've found so far. So starting this at one instead of zero. All right, moving on. Uh, our conditions, we're going to check to see is i, we're gonna make sure that i is less than five, and then we're gonna incre increment i plus plus, okay. So again, we always want i less than five because we talked about in earlier videos about arrays, or we never really wanna be calling a value, like we never really wanna be calling i values five like that because that'll give us a bounds error because that would actually be the sixth element in a value, you know, in an array of only five elements and just throws everything out the window and you get a bunch of errors. So i less than five, i plus plus, all right. Now what we need, we definitely need an if statement because we're checking these two variables against each other. So we'll put in our if statement so now what we'll say, we'll say val if values, if values i is greater than max, then do something. And that something, we're just going to set max to values i equals values i. And this will effectively swap out, you know, give us the biggest number that we found so far. So let's think about why this works. So we set double max equal to value zero. So we're setting it to the index number of zero. So remember our index numbers are zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, so zero, value zero is number two. Now we check in our if statement, we check if values i is greater than max. Well values i, this i is actually set to the one, not zero here. And so values one, we check our index number. So zero, one, that's a four. So basically, if, if 4 is greater than 2, then we're going to set max to be that 4. And so that's exactly what's happening. And then it'll try, check again, so then the next time we come through, it'll say is 4 greater than 8, or is 8 greater than 4, sorry, and if yes, it'll update that to an 8, and so on. So when we go and build and run this program, we should expect this to print us out a max once to the screen, and that max will be 8, just like that. So there you go, we can easily, find the minimum as well, we could just maybe change this to min, change 
change that to min, just so it makes sense for human users. Min, and then all we're going to do is we're just going to switch the order. Oh, we're actually going to keep that one. We're just going to switch the direction of this guy. So we'll be like that. And then this exact same thing is going to happen. We're going to start. Min is going to equal 2. We're always starting with the first element. And then if value is 1, so if this 4 is less than the 2, we'll swap it out. And that's not going to happen until we get to this 1 here. So build and run. Save that file. And when we go and run, boom, prints out a one to the screen. All right, so there you go. Uh, imagine if you had an array with 100 values, you might want to be doing something like this with a for loop. So uh, that is how you find the maximum or minimum value of an array in C++.